What's going on guys? We're back. Another video. Summer's coming to an end. Expo is a month away. Actually about three weeks away. So pretty excited for that. Hockey season's going full swing. So enjoying that. Not enjoying the Avs losing, but hey, it's three games. Oilers won their first game tonight, so good for them. Dry side will help me out in fantasy. Anyways, this is a video I meant to make a while back so that I was thinking that maybe people could take advantage of it over the summer. It's again looking at grading plays, something that I look at a lot and something that I'll be keeping in mind at the Expo in a month and, and cards I'll be looking to buy that I do want to go raw to grade and what I'll be looking for. So obviously the offensive guys get all of the hype there, you know, all the attention. You want the guy who's going to be the next 40, 50 goal scorer and that's pretty exciting. But what about defensemen? I mean really sort of shunned by the hobby for the most part a little bit boring but maybe and what we'll be looking at maybe that's not such a bad thing so let's get into it using market movers as always put the code up there lap 20 off if you want to use market movers try it out you get 20 percent off for life but we're going to be using market movers as usual so first screen here i got kale and quinn so they're sort of outliers in dollar perspective you know two guys who are just valued nominally higher than everyone else you know but what we're going to be looking at here is the raw to psa 10. so Kale going at about 218 again, always in US dollars on market movers. There's an option actually where I can go into Canadian, but I don't do that. I just, I've worked off US dollars for so long. I just prefer leaving it as US dollars. So anyways, selling at $218 raw right now. PSA 10 going for about $404 ratio 1.9 there. Uh, Quinn at about $54. He actually has more sales up around the $65, $70 with the PSA 10 going for $150. So you can see the ratios here, 1.9 on Macar and 2.8 on Hughes. So, so still not bad buys, even though Kale is under two. That's the world that we're living in now. We're not getting the 4X. It used to be 3.5 to 4X times for a PSA 10. Those days are gone. You, you just got to adjust. So, you know, two... 2x especially for higher dollar cards is pretty common we're starting to see that a lot now if you're like uh montreal sports cards and into the speckleds if you buy any speckleds they're probably from him shout out to the discord guys raw speckled to psa 10 generally two two times 2x okay and we're, we see the same thing in other higher dollar cards so both these guys right around two not really surprising definitely you know some grading opportunity there not the best in the world, you know, I definitely like the Kale just because nominally it's it's higher dollar. But what you also have to keep in mind is a lot of these cards have been graded. You take a look at the pop here, we have Kale at a pop 2,794 and Quinn at a pop 3,080. So if you find these cards raw, you gotta wonder why that person hasn't already graded it. So make sure that you have your little, your loop. To look at the cards and make sure they're in good condition because there's usually a reason if it hasn't been graded by now i'm not sure why the person wouldn't grade that but there are people who don't so anywho that is quinn and kale but we're going to get into more of the meat and potatoes of of guys um the more common folk if you will anyways so here we got Evan Bouchard, Rasmus Dahlin, and Miro Heiskanen. And so what you see here, these are raw pricing, and it's all over the place. Um, some of the sales are outliers. I would guess these bottom dollars, the couple that I looked at were auctions. So auctions just, people don't find it. If you have a shitty title, something like that, they go lower. So that's what, you know, this was right here on this Evan yeah, on this Evan Bouchard sale, it was just an auction that went pretty poorly for someone. Anyways, what you see, and we're looking at the last 180 days, generally not too much volatility. I mean, there's price movement, but they're flat. Your defensemen in the NHL are gonna be selling between 15 and $30 US, okay? That's just where they sit. Um, we'll take a look at the ratios on these guys. So I'm gonna click on the PSA 10s here to add those to the chart. We're gonna take a look at, um, 30 day so miro 20 dollars raw 60 dollars for a psa 10. so ratio three which is pretty good right like i said two is a lot more standard so three is pretty good the problem is we have to spend 20 dollars on grading now we're into it for 40 60 and we could get 60 out of a psa 10. doesn't make much sense so miro no bueno 23 bucks on rasmus 
going close to a ratio of four, selling for 90. So this card, if we get it for 25 and then 20 grading, we're at $45, we're getting a ratio of about two. So not so bad, uh, not bad, you know? Evan Bouchard, $30 selling for 120 getting four on this so 30 dollars, we'd be into it for 50 and selling out of 120 like definitely the most appealing of those ones because we're getting more nominal dollars along with a better ratio on that so these defensemen like i said and, and you don't have to worry the whole point of, of why i'm looking at defensemen here and, and what i'm trying to point out is just there isn't the price volatility you don't really have to worry about evan bouchard collapsing his price collapsing He's the top D-man on the team, one of the top D-men in the NHL, and the price just isn't going to move a heck of a lot. We've seen it with, with Miro and Rasmus. I mean, Rasmus, you can actually see his run-up. I don't know if we can see it. What is he? The yellow here and the pink. He had a run-up. Was that last year? Yeah, I guess it was these sales here. No, that's not them. Oh, because I'm only on the 180 days. Let's go out to all data and take a look at Rasmus. And here's... Here's his wild run up last year. And it, it's covered by this. I've talked to Tyler at Mark Movers. I don't like how it does that. But you can see anyways where I'm covering, you see that big spike, that was Rasmus Dell. Rasmus's run up. And that can certainly happen with lots of players. We saw it with Tage, we saw it with Troy Terry, we saw it with Dowling. We see it with guys every year have this big run up. But remember how it ends? down he just goes right back to where he was and where these other defensemen are okay so it's nice to catch that run up but that's when we want to be selling these things as fast as possible anyways there's those guys so we'll take a look at adam fox Maritz cider take a look at these ratios so a ratio of five and a ratio of six so fox going for 15 dollars jesus man um yeah it's wild so he's still at that $15 marks. Cider is down. And you can see when we factor in $20 grading fees, you'd be into Fox for $35. So you would get 2X uh, ratio if, if you were to get a PSA 10, just over 2X. Not so bad. So I mean, if I can get a good price on the card, like I'm not against buying it, but it, it's certainly not ideal. And then Maritz Cider is relatively low, uh, eight, call it $9 US, $52 PF. PSA 10, and again, costing us $20. So we're gonna be into this card for 30-ish US. Um, getting 52 on a PSA 10 doesn't make a whole lot of sense, a lot of sense. But let's take a look at, at guys, a couple of guys where I think that there's opportunities and guys who I'm gonna be specifically targeting. And I have bought some of these, I have a bunch on, I tend to go EPAC on these, but you can buy them however you want. Live is, is awesome, because then you can look at the card and see condition. But we got Brock Favor, Luke Hughes, and Owen Power. So let's take a look at the ratios. Owen Power, a 10 bucker, about a $10 card, but then selling for $55 PSA 10. Good ratio, 5.2. The problem again, I'll keep saying it, $20 grading fee. We're up at 30 bucks and we're only getting 55. So not ideal there. Here's a good one. So Luke Hughes, 20, $22, 5.7 ratio, selling at $125 uh, on a PSA 10. Why would that be? I'll come back to him one sec. Brock Faber, uh, $20 selling at 120. So two cards with really good ratios there. And why would that be the next thing I would go and look at? I still think that these are good opportunities, but let's go sort of one step further. And we're gonna go to gem rate and have a look at, we're gonna go to player data here. Then we're gonna go to hockey. And then we're, we'll take a look at Hugh, Luke Hughes, but Brock Faber, I believe his data will be almost the exact same. I'm going to filter this to card number 248, which is Luke Hughes' uh, Young Guns. So <clears throat> we'll take a look at the base card, 30%, okay, 30% gem rate. So that's why it's getting such a premium is just because it's a really hard gem. So what can we do from there? Let's take a look at these other gem rates. Here we go, Silver Foil, Silver Foil, EPAC gemming at 56%. So for me, that's why I'm collecting these Luke Hughes on EPAC. I would rather myself make a couple of silvers and take advantage of that higher that higher gem rate than trying to buy a whole bunch of base. If you can get some base from a card show and inspect them and have a look at them in their good condition, then it's, it's a card I would certainly be buying. But I think the exploit here, what would be a better play is building some on EPAC, send it over to Com C, get it shipped home, send those to um, send those to PSA, just because it's gemming so high. 
Uh, you see the speckled here is another opportunity. You could do that one. Obviously that's 15 times the young gun. So you're gonna be into taking a shot at one of those. You're gonna be, what was Hughes going for? $20, let's call it $20. You need 15 of them. So you're gonna be into, into it for about $300 US. If you can get them at that price, because these Yahoo's on EPAC think that EPAC cards are worth 1.6 X, like their, their value. So it's really irritating. Sometimes you're better off just buying um, speckleds off a of comm C, seeing if the guy making an offer, seeing if the guy will come down on it and trying to get it for say 12 times the true value is like a decent, would be a better way, a better approach to the card rather than grinding and grinding and grinding and get 15. Um, again, unless you're like Montreal sports cards, you have a little network and, and you know those guys. That's part of the game, right? He's doing it right. He speckles these things easier, faster than everyone because he's just got a, a cool little network. I don't have that. I got to grind these things so it's a pain in the ass and you know, good for him. Whatever, we're doing different things. But anyways, the speckled opportunities that are 55%. I'd be looking at the silver foil 56. I'd rather have three silvers than, you know, a single speckled. And uh, the last thing we'll take a look at is just the sales on this. You'd be looking at five young guns at $20, which is $100 Canadian or or one, sorry, $100 US, which is about $130 Canadian, plus grading fees, 20 bucks, so call it 30 US. I'd be into the card for about $150 Canadian graded and a PSA 10 going at, we'll go with a lower number, say 350 plus. So here's your prices. The last one auctioned at 414, 387, 379. You get the point. So that's a good opportunity. So guys, defensemen suck. Yeah, they sort of do, but consider them like a blue chip stock. Anyways, they're worth looking at just because they're boring. Take advantage of that, right? It's just it's just about the arbitrage of the situation. And they're really stable. Prices don't move much. That's all I got for this one. I'll be back, I promise, one day. Won't be long, no, I'll keep making videos. Guys, I appreciate you watching. We'll check you.